The website, TonyPerkins.com. You're listening to Washington Watch. Right, as I mentioned at the top of the program, the Department of Justice sent a strong message today to government officials who are restricting religious freedom, stating in a document filed in the federal court in the state of Mississippi this, quote, individual rights secured by the Constitution do not disappear during a public health crisis. End quote. Joining us now to talk more about this, Eric Dryband, Assistant Attorney General for the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice. Eric, welcome back to Washington Watch. Tony, thanks for having me back. Uh, Very significant step by the Department of Justice today. Explain to our listeners uh, what took place. Well, uh, last week uh, at a church in Greenville, Mississippi, uh, the, the city of Greenville and its mayor dispatch police officers to uh, issue $500 fines to worshipers who were sitting in the parking lot at the Temple Baptist Church with their car windows rolled up and listening to their pastor, Arthur Scott, who was inside the church broadcasting. And they were essentially attending a drive-in church service complying with CDC guidelines for social distancing. The church did not have a website or the ability to, you know, stream services online, and many of the social uh, the church members did not have social media accounts. So, nevertheless, they were fined. Uh, they then filed suit. We then, a few hours ago, just today, uh, filed a statement of interest in support of the church, in which we explained that while it is true that governments do have Uh, in times of emergency like this, a broad authority to protect all of us through these social distancing guidelines, that it is unlawful for a local government, law enforcement, et cetera, to uh, single out religion or religious worshipers or houses of worship. Uh, And uh, and the allegations here certainly raise uh, serious questions about that. So we file in support of the church. These restrictions, if they are the the least intrusive and they're they're justifiable, can go forward, but they have to be applied uniformly, meaning that everybody's treated the same. In this particular case, it's very clear that they were not, because you had a church where they were keeping this, as you said, CDC guidelines, staying in their cars, windows rolled up, but just down the street— at a uh, drive-up restaurant, people were sitting there in their cars, windows down, and they were able to function. Yeah, and those are the allegations in the case. And uh, the attorney general, in addition to what we filed, issued a very strong statement. It's available on the Justice Department's website about this. That's exactly right, Tony. It, the Certainly local and state governments and even the federal government have asked us to comply with these social distancing guidelines. And there are times and they, that those guidelines do extend to religious worship. But... At the same time, it it is unlawful to target uh, religious institutions to single them out for stricter treatment or broader prohibitions than may apply to other similarly situated people and institutions. And those are the concerns uh, that are issued in this case in Mississippi. So we felt it was important that we send a strong signal uh, uh, to the public, but also in support of Temple Baptist Church and Pastor Scott and the worshipers there as well. So what happens from here? What, What happens next? Well, the, 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 the plaintiffs in the case, Temple Baptist Church and Pastor Scott, on, on, through their lawyers, are asking the federal judge there to issue a temporary restraining order, uh, and, and, uh, and the, the judge will consider the evidence and issue a decision. Uh, we've provided a framework in the papers we filed today for the, we, that we hope the judge will follow. Uh, if the judge uh, agrees that Temple Baptist Church and Pastor Scott have demonstrated that they should, uh, you know, that they should prevail, the judge can issue a series of orders, uh, first a temporary restraining order, possibly a preliminary injunction, or even an, an injunctive relief that, that com- requires the city of Greenville, Mississippi, to permit this church and its worshipers and Pastor Scott to worship within the guidelines uh, provided both uh, by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as well as the executive, an executive order issued by the governor of Mississippi. Another possibility is that uh, the state of Mississippi may decide, or the, or the city itself may decide to settle with the church and, and agree to, to permit Temple Baptist Church to go ahead as it wishes. So there, you know, there are different outcomes possible here. Well, I just wanted for our listeners want to underscore that it was two weeks ago you were on the program before any of these types of uh, cases broke. In fact, we were talking about how it was important for churches to comply with the CDC guidelines. But on that program, when I asked you about it, you said very clearly the Department of Justice. If any official attempts to go beyond reasonable limitations that the Department of Justice would be watching because this administration cares deeply and understands the importance of this First Amendment freedom. 
That's exactly right, Tony. And that comes directly from President Trump and Attorney General William Barr themselves. Uh, they both feel very strongly about this, as do I. And uh, the Attorney General directed us um, to, to file papers today. And certainly we fully, I fully supported that, and we did that. And uh, we hope the, uh, the justice will prevail in the case. Are there other cases that you're looking at right now? There are other cases that we are looking at. Um, there, there are various cases uh, being, you know, pending or being talked about potentially being filed around the country. Uh, this is the first one that we have filed papers in, but we are looking at other cases, and it just have to depend on how those cases evolve. Very often, uh, you know, local officials, if when they realize that, if in fact that they've, you know, overstepped, that they will uh, amicably resolve the issue before it goes into court. But we are looking at other cases. Yes. All right. Uh, Eric Dryben, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and uh, our appreciation to you and to Attorney Ge General William Barr for uh, being on watch for that first freedom. Thank you, Tony. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, folks, to find out more, go to the website, TonyPerkins.com. This is significant. Uh, you know, in the, you know, four years ago, we didn't have this. We actually had a government that was working against us when it came to the exercise of our religious freedom. In this case, we have an administration that is aggressively defending that first freedom. 